Two weeks ago, I talked a little about the Seekers, the Decepticon jets who all share a body type with Starscream. For the last episode in this short series about cult favourite characters, I'm taking a look at another member of this legion, the very first female Seeker, Slipstream. Slipstream was introduced into Transformers lore in 2008 in the Transformers animated cartoon. In this series, the Seekers were all clones of Starscream, created by the treacherous Decepticon to serve as his own personal army. Each one embodied one aspect of Starscream's personality, like his dishonesty, his cowardice, his ego. But when Starscream wondered what part of him the one and only female clone represented, the only response she gave was, Don't ask. Strategically minded and sharp tongued, the female Starscream clone was quick to lead the others in turning on their creator when his attempt to overthrow Megatron failed. And had the show been renewed for a fourth season, plans existed to have her return as the leader of her own splinter faction of Decepticons. Now, in the cartoon itself, none of the Seekers were referred to with individual names. The female clone was credited only as Female Starscream. Each of the others was coloured like a famous pre-existing Seeker, Thundercracker, Skywarp and so on, so their identities were easy to determine. But the female's purple and teal colours didn't match any existing ones, having been supposedly very loosely based on the Decepticon Overlord. Furthermore, unlike the other clones, no toys of her were released in the animated line, so it wouldn't be until the publication of IDW Publishing's Allspark Almanac guidebook a few months after the end of the series in 2009 that she would officially be given a name. Slipstream. It wasn't a name that had been used for any Transformers toys before, but it had seen some limited use in Transformers media, as the name of a minicon in the 2004 Transformers Armada video game, and a generic Autobot in one of the live-action movie tie-in comics. As the first female Seeker, Slipstream represented something that fans had spent decades clamouring for, and so it wasn't long before new incarnations of her were appearing in other Transformers media, where she would show up as a regular Seeker, without the clone backstory of the animated original. The first was in the 2010 video game War for Cybertron. This version of the character would later be showcased in the 2012 novel Transformers Exiles, in which she battled Optimus Prime himself over the planet Junkion, and she became the first to get a toy, a recolor of the Transformers Prime Starscream figure released exclusively through the Transformers Collectors Club in 2013. In the years that followed, Slipstream became an increasingly common sight in ancillary media like mobile games, but Hasbro were slow to capitalise on her rising popularity among fans, not featuring her in any major new comics or cartoons, nor releasing any toys of her at mass retail, beyond a minifigure in the Creo building block toy line. As if to punctuate this, the 2015 Robots in Disguise series felt comfortable using the name Slipstream for a totally different character who had nothing to do with the female Decepticon, a male Autobot Minicon. As seen in the Robots in Disguise cartoon, this Slipstream was once a petty criminal in the employ of the Decepticon Shadow Raker before he and fellow thief Jetstorm changed their ways to become students of the Autobot Samurai, Drift. As Deployer Minicons, the pair's buzzsaw alternate modes connected to Drift's forearms, and they initially worked with him as bounty hunters, before becoming members of Bumblebee's team of Autobots on Earth, where, with the help of their new comrades, they continued working hard to prove themselves to their stern, unyielding master. The same year as Robots in Disguise Slipstream was introduced, however, Hasbro's Japanese partner, Takara, created the first figure of the original animated Slipstream as part of their Transformers Legends toy line. Retooled from the 2014 Transformers Generations Windblade figure, rather than any corresponding Starscream toy, manga packaged with the figure continued Slipstream's story from after the end of the animated cartoon. 
Left a fugitive after the defeat of the Decepticons, she purchased interdimensional gyro rotors from Swindle and used them to flee the animated universe, travelling to the goofy, slapstick world of the Legends universe, where she was recruited by Generation 1 Megatron to work at his Terracura trading company. After the end of Robots in Disguise in 2017, Better late than never, Hasbro joined in giving Slipstream her due in 2018, returning the name to the female seeker who made it famous, and finally releasing proper action figures of her at mass retail in the Transformers Cyberverse toyline. The Cyberverse incarnation of Slipstream took the role of leading villain in the first season of the accompanying animated series, as the commander of a detachment of Seekers stationed on Earth, hunting down Windblade and Bumblebee in order to discover the location of the Autobots' crashed spacecraft, the Ark. The show has seen her clash with Windblade several times, and just as Windblade has usurped the role of Autobot leading lady from RC in the years since her introduction, Slipstream seems a likely candidate indeed to take over the role of Transformers' go-to female villain. As her profile continues to rise, we can only wait to see if she'll be making appearances in other toy lines in media, and what Cyberverse has in store for her next. And those are the basics on Slipstream. If you've enjoyed January's focus on little scene characters, tell me in the comments, and please do consider subscribing and supporting the channel on Patreon if you can. Next week, it's back to the big guns in our first Patreon-sponsored episode of 2019,